Hello, Griever84 here with a brand new video. This time we're uh, talking about a new game that I've been playing called Core Keeper. Um, just wanted to put out a little video here, kind of detailing some beginner tips that I wish that I knew when I started playing. Um, that way, hopefully, those of you who are diving into this game as well uh, can have a little bit easier time. So I have 10 tips, not necessarily in any random order, uh, but here we go. So the first tip I have is kill every enemy that you see for early HP boosts. Uh, this game has a skill system and basically for every enemy that you kill, uh, you get extra max HP and of course, um, one of your very first skills that you get, 30% of all the skill points you earn are added to your maximum health. So as you can see here, uh, standing in my in-game gear, I've got 450 HP, which is actually pretty decent. Um, the second tip I have is do not be afraid to knock down the walls around the core, uh, which is where I'm actually currently standing, it's where you start the game at. Um, this opens up and allows you to start building things like farms that I have to the upper left here and my actual home base, which I have to the lower right here. Uh, for the longest time, for some reason, I decided that I wanted to keep the walls up so I could use them later on. And then I realized I could just replace them if I, if I need to, and they're great for crafting material. Uh, number three here, uh, when gathering materials, um, you're going to come across ores, and as you smelt those ores, um, they're going to become bars here, obviously, like in most games, and my suggestion to new players is always upgrade your pickaxe first, and the reason for that is because your pickaxe is going to allow you to mine through the area where you just got your ore upgrade easier. Uh, the second item that I'd su suggest upgrading is your what, your main weapon that you use. That way you can uh, survive a little bit easier. Um, this one, this next tip, uh, number four, is a little bit of a late game tip. Uh, over here in your inventory, you have what's called souls. And right now, there's only one soul in the game. It is the soul of Azos. Uh, and it has a 10% chance to spawn a Thunder Beam on melee critical hits. Uh, this build that I use relies heavily on critical hits, so I often spawn these. And one thing that the developers did is they enabled this to be to toggleable, so I can turn it on and off. Uh, turn it on when I'm out and about and then turn it off when I'm in my base and the reason for that is is the beam itself will tear up floors it'll tear down walls uh, it'll damage enemies and uh, it can actually wreak havoc on your base it'll up in crops things like that so you don't want to have it enabled while you're in your base uh, number five here uh, this is for multiplayer um, they have what's called a cartography table here, and if you interact with it, uh, you can see it uh, shows the entire map. And what this does is this allows another player to walk in, use the cartography table as well, and they will have all of my map data that I've used to explore uh, the world in so far. <clears throat> uh, number six, uh, boss scanners. Um, the Hive Mother, uh, you've got Gorm the Devourer, and then you've also got Azos the Sky Titan. Uh, each of these scanners will tell you exactly where those bosses are. So for me, um, the Hive Mother is right here. Um, my spawner for, uh, Gorm is right here. And... Azos is located right over here where all this wood is on the ground. Um, now there's unfortunately not one for the very first boss in the game, 
but luckily for me it spawned very close to my core and this is where uh, I can actually fight um, the slime boss which is the very first boss in the game now speaking of bosses number seven here it is at least in the beginning cheaper and more effective to create new worlds and hunt down the bosses especially using those boss scanners uh, than it is to actually purchase these resummoning idols uh, but eventually you'll hit a point where you have enough ancient coins that you can just purchase the idols but at first it's a pretty handy way to farm what you need off of those bosses um, so number eight here beds now I didn't use beds for the longest time uh, until a viewer actually pointed this out to me but what you can do is for example let's say you're going over here to fight Azos the sky titan uh, so say about where my mouse is this junction right here you can place a bed sleep in it that sets your spawn point and um, you can do that for multiple players. And as you guys are fighting the Sky Titan, you'll respawn over here and you can just run right back into the fight. <clears throat> uh, all right. Number nine, recall idols. These things have saved me <clears throat> so much time. And you actually get them, I believe, yep, right here from Gorm the Devourer. Uh, it's an ancient gemstone and a mechanical part, but basically it's this game's version of uh, teleport to home. Now, whether that be your bed or that be the core itself, depends on whether or not you've actually got a spawn point set. Uh, but they're really handy if you're, say, way out in the distance, either in... Um, the wilderness biome or in the stony biome your inventory is full you just need to get back to base um, they're really handy for that and then finally uh, talking about the ancient coins here number 10 um, as you're gut as you're going around uh, you'll often find these junk items I unfortunately don't have any any of, any of them on me right now um, but they sell fairly well for ancient coins and a lot of players would normally trash it because they are considered you know quote unquote garbage um but they're really handy to bring back to base if you have the inventory space for them sell them to one of the two npcs here and then start stockpiling the ancient coins um the reason i say this is because idols are 500 coins a piece and this rune parchment is actually 2,000 coins. Uh, and I point this out specifically in this video because this is the parchment for the best weapon in the game. Uh, the rune song, which is actually right here. Um, but that being said, those are my 10 tips for brand new players of Core Keeper. Uh, if you guys have any tips of your own, definitely drop them in the comments down below. Make sure to like the video, share it with your friends if you think they'd uh, benefit from it. And of course, subscribe to the channel. Thank you. And uh, until next time, my guardians, we'll see you guys later.